Backed by popular demand, Vince Lancey joins us today with gold still hovering around its four-year lows. Vince, good to finally be reunited with you. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Vince, can you believe the last time we spoke was in April, and since then gold has dropped roughly 12% and in fact hitting four-year lows this week. What do you make of gold's price drop, and how do you see it playing out as we end the year off? It's not a new problem. Uh, part of it is not a new problem. Historically, gold is, without fresh allocations to buy it, it'll just weaken from apathy, almost like um, uh, an inertia. Uh, a lack of interest, deeper pocketed dealers can once again use gold as shorts for carry trades for higher interest rate products. Um, uh, it's, it's, just, it's just an asset, I think. Just look at it inverted to the stock market. How many people have been trying to pick the top in the stock market? Uh, it's the same idea. I don't think uh, I don't think there's a lot of interest, and so left to its own devices, gold will go sideways to lower without an event. So, what do you do as an investor here, Vince? I've been getting so many emails uh, from people who say they just don't know what to do with gold uh, right now, and they don't want to hear be long. You have to remember what gold is. Gold is a hedge against the rest of your portfolio. You should have 5 to 10% of your portfolio in the precious metal against being long stocks. If you're a person out there who is saying, I want gold to go up, I need gold to go up, well then guess what? You're probably not long stocks. If you're long the stock market, you need to be long gold as a hedge. If you've been long 5 to 10%, that's fine because stocks have performed very well. But it's the generation, I think, that just came up, you know, from the run-up from $700 to $1,800 when Paulson was involved. Those guys, I think, are newly born irrational gold bugs. You know, there will be another rally like that. It will be a venture, possibly a QE5. But if you're a buyer of gold in bullion form, you have to be putting money into it that you can't afford to lose. You have to be able to take physical delivery and sit on it. It is a hedge. If you're buying in equity form, that's a different story. For example, I have a decent amount of gold stocks, and I've gotten hurt badly on them, but that's been a hedge for the rest of my portfolio, and I'm staying with that long term. I'm happy to lose money in gold while I'm making money in my other assets. Uh, if you're just buying gold as a speculator, then that's what you're doing. You're speculating. I will speculate on gold again. It's just not time yet. I'll wait for a QE5 or whatever the government's going to call it. And I know you uh, hold gold mining stocks, Vince, which obviously are having an even tougher time than gold right now. What are you doing right now? Are you just riding it out? Yeah, I mean, there are those that say with, say, one to two-year time horizons, when that time horizon goes by and they're not in the money, they will delude themselves into saying things like, oh, well, you have to be in it for the long term. I'm quite aware that there is potential for self-delusion. But the fact of the matter is, you know, much of my gold holdings in the equity side are in my retirement fund. That necessitates 10, 15-year holdings. I'm not touching that. That's the bottom line there. I, I think when you're looking at the equity side for gold or stocks that have gold, you, you have to, aside from knowing the quality of the companies you're dealing with, you have to know that this is not something to buy and flip. Uh, this is not something to hold for one, two, or even five years. Uh, Mine are in my 401k. That's the bottom line. My trading slash investing outside of my 401k is in bullion, uh, aside from the physical that I own as well. I mean, I hope that helps. I hope that makes some sense. Now, Vince, the big highlight this week was the ECB meeting on Thursday. We also had the Fed meeting last week. So central bankers are really in the spotlight. Uh, what do you make of QE ending in the U.S. and at the same time being implemented in the U EU and Japan? It almost seemed perfectly timed. Yeah, uh, I feel like putting on a tinfoil hat, but I do believe that you know the currency war concept is true. I also believe that the governments are cooperating to keep uh, uh, the fight as civil as possible. Uh, it's not a coincidence that we're ending and someone else is starting. It's basically ringing around the rosy, and uh, every country will get a chance to debase their currency, and it will eventually end, I believe, with us. And let's talk about the dollar and other currencies now. Vince, the dollar, obviously the shining star these past few weeks, 
The euro on the flip side falling to a two-year low. Uh, seems like other nations are aiming at leaving their currency low while the dollar continues to, to rally, Vince. And you mentioned before uh, currency war. Are we in a full-fledged currency war? And how could this affect the U.S. economy moving forward? Um, that's a good point. Uh, you, you would see the BRICS or, or underdeveloped, lesser developed nations that are dependent on natural resources. On one hand, you would think they'd be very unhappy with weaker domestic currency because it causes domestic inflation and their populations suffer when they have to purchase foreign you know, goods ex imported in. On the other hand, uh, they get to sell their raw materials uh, uh, more readily uh, because their currency is weaker. So, you know, when you, when you look, your statement is, is actually important because, you know, the nations, these nations' populations suffer from weaker currencies, and they benefit from exporting their raw materials. So net net, they'll complain, but not too loudly. There will only be any, there will only be any concern or real action if there's popular revolt, uh, like you had during the euro crisis. In the meantime, these countries like Argentina, they can keep inflation artificially in check uh, using tariffs and, and uh, uh, subsidies and pegs while being able to sell the raw materials abroad. I mean, it's a disaster for the citizen standard of living, however. Uh, eventually, it will end in a weaker dollar, but not until the government has violated probably every law of math and physics that exists. Vince Lancy, you are the real deal, so thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to being on again soon. We hope so, Vince. We welcome you back anytime for your great insights. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Kitco News.